possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast. Hope you're all well. Mikey Stafford here, joined by Eamon Fitzmaurice, Kevin McStay and Rory O'Neill took head to a pretty big weekend of Gaelic football. Such a big weekend of Gaelic football, they've just told all the hurling to go away for a week. How are you doing, lads? Very good, Mikey. Mike. Very good. Good stuff. Um, there's a bit of consternation, really, about just how big a weekend of football this is, and I was wondering to get your views on it. Um, you know, we got the the... the Munster football final at three o'clock on a Saturday. You got the Leinster football final following pretty quick afterwards at five o'clock. Interestingly, Kildare in Dublin. Solid, solid rugby hinterland. That match is going up directly against uh, Leinster's Champions Cup final against La Rochelle in, in Marseille. Um, some people might say the Venn diagram of supporters is pretty small there, but I'd say it's growing. And then on Sunday, well, you've got the Roscombe v Galway at 1.45 and Donegal v Derry at 4 p.m. Eamon, what do you think? Are are provincial finals getting their the the credit they deserve? Are they getting the the shop window they deserve, or could the GA be doing a little bit more to promote the provincial championships? I, I think they they could, Mikey. Look, they were so uh, going by Congress. We were so anxious to hold on to the provincial championships. It seems uh, strange. I suppose first of all, it's the first time that we have the four of them on the same weekend. You know, the model had been two two per weekend and uh, that seemed to have been working okay but putting the four of them on one weekend was going to be a departure in its own right and then obviously clashing with the um, the international sports isn't isn't helping so I don't know you'd wonder is there an element of the crash and burn about us that uh, it helps arguments further down the line with regard to eventually moving towards the famous proposal B and um, aligning the league and championship. But uh, certainly it's not the best way. I think they're expecting very small crowds for the Leinster final in particular. Can't imagine a massive crowd in Killarney either. So that's disappointing when you're getting to this stage of the championship and you have big games. And I imagine um, Galway and Clone is certainly on Sunday will be much busier. But uh, um, I think the, it is a bit of an own goal, all right, in fairness, the way, the, way, the way it has worked out and the way it has materialised. Yeah, I'm a bit torn on it, Kev, because on the one hand, I think, you know, the G, like, they're not helping here. Like, we had an, in, an incident today where Paul Conroy, I hope I can say this now, he's one player of the month. Um, so there's a press conference, you know, arranged with the with the different, you know, the players from football, hurling, camogie, ladies football. Dermot Burns of Limerick is available to talk. There's no hurling matches this weekend, but Paul, Paul Conroy is not available. So like, it's gonna, they're not doing it. This is just, a, the, the scheduling is just one example of how, and I think it's a fair complaint, like, because we get it in RTE, you're not doing enough to promote the game. So it's not our job to promote the game. We, we, we cover Correct. the games. It's the GA's job to promote the game. And I have to say, considering all the changes they've done this year in moving events to new dates, et cetera, there hasn't been, a, I don't see a massive push that the casual fan would actually know that four provincial finals are on this weekend. That was the bit I was actually uh, talking about earlier on in the week. That It all seems a little bit rushed. Now, I have to be careful here because, in fairness, this is kind of what we all wanted. We all wanted this kind and of... And it's only two weeks shorter than the 2019 yeah. championship, so it's not a crazy compression. Correct. And I think you have to be, you have to be fair, but at the same time, I, it was a very interesting uh, little l- little uh, return from Colum and um, Des on the Sunday game last Sunday. Last Sunday night, uh, I don't know if you picked up on it, was that he said, well, it seems to be RTE that's promoting the Talchin Cup. And the point you just made, like, it's not RTE's job to promote any of these championships. And they broadcast them, fair enough, as, 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 uh, to the very best of their ability. But the, the push from Crow Park hasn't been uh, hasn't been what it should be, what it, what, it, what, it, what it must be, really. And I certainly agree with Eamon on that one, that uh, if everybody is so hell-bent on the, on the provincial championships, and there's part of me, I'm sure, and there's part of you, Eamon, uh, uh, as provincial winners in the past, in the, in, in the good old days, that we harp and we do, we do have a love for it on, on one level. But uh, if, 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 if everybody is so in love with it, wouldn't you think the, the GA at, at HQ are at provincial level would really market it. And what's happened this weekend uh, is shocking. 
I mean, to go up against uh, a massive rugby game head to head, the Leinster final, uh, uh, to put it on. I mean, I, I was thinking my own personal logistics, trying to get out of Killarney at what, 20 to 5, race down the road and either get back to the hotel or get to a pub to see the Leinster final. And then I was thinking, they probably won't have the Leinster final on in Killarney. They'll have the rugby final on, I'm thinking. I don't know. Uh, and you no, they, get... they, they'll have the Gaelic football on in Killarney. I'd, I'd, I'd be fairly safe in the knowledge. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll, we'll ask, we'll ask yeah. the local, but or I, maybe I, maybe it'll I, be I, the build up to Liverpool v Real Madrid. Either, yeah, you know? but maybe that too. Maybe that too. But look, it's, so it's, know, it's, knowing knowing the publicans in Killarney, they have all three on lads. They have everyone covered. Yeah. But I mean, this this fixture, obviously, the European Cup fixture, the champions, uh, the rugby final was known, you know, mm. months and months and months ago, uh, and I don't think it would have taken a genius to figure out that it was most likely going to be Dublin and Kildare. Uh, even I figured that out, I think. So, so it doesn't take a genius to do it. It's, <laughs> it was fairly straightforward stuff and, and it stayed with form lines and, uh, and now we have the clash that really, really should have been avoided. I'll throw something in and today, today is not the day for it, but we're certainly sure, well, we're surely heading towards a debate about Friday night, uh, major matches on a Friday night. Now, how that might be done I don't really know. But if you're going to play four championship finals in the one weekend, you're probably either stretching it out from Friday to Sunday and then Saturday to a bank holiday Monday, something like that. But um, where there's four involved, it's very hard to market them. Well, there wasn't even an effort to market them in this in this instance, I think. Um, it, it, uh, but it's very hard to find the, the window to stack them up so that uh, pe people can spread themselves out. Because everybody will want to see the four finals. They want, these are the, the runners and riders now. These are the serious boys. After, after this weekend, the province is all over and we're heading into the All-Ireland series. So, you know, the GA family out there will want to see what's up in Ulster, what's in Connacht, what's happening. Curry is, is decent and are as, good, are as good as we think. What about Dublin? Everybody will want to see them, but that's simply not going to be possible. Yeah, it's uh, Rory. We, we try not to crib too much, and I'm not cribbing. I'm really looking forward to this weekend of sport. But from a TV production point of view, it has to be a bit of a strain. It is. And um, look, we took quite a bit of flack for last Sunday's discussion after the show. Um, and it was the discussion was largely based around what we were probably envisaging happening this weekend. That was the nature of it, really. It was billed, I think, when it was put out on social media as a club versus county. That's not what it was. And it wasn't a debate. I didn't go, I wouldn't call it a debate, but it wasn't designed to be a debate. I certainly didn't call it a debate. And um, but this is we knew this was going to happen, you know, like we we spoke about this, Mikey, back in, I'd say, February or March, when we mentioned the fact that the Champions Cup final and the, the Champions League final were going to be on this weekend clashing. I mean, this is not news um, mm. and newsflash. The Champions Cup final and the Champions League final won't be moving next year, lads. You know, like they're not going to be worried. Jesus, Kerry and Limerick are down in Killarney. We better ship, we better ship the Champions Cup final there. You know, like that isn't going to happen. Now, to be fair to fixture makers, and this comes back to, as I said, you mentioned earlier, Mikey, that it's two weeks shorter, but it's four weeks earlier. That's the key. Yeah, that's the key here. It's four weeks earlier, but two weeks shorter. So the the point there is. When when the fixture makers sit down to pat to plan out the fixtures program, they start at the end, so they begin with the All Ireland finals and work their way backwards. That's how it. That's how I would envisage it's done. Certainly, that's how I do it when I'm trying to plan the Sunday game live. For instance, you start at the end and you work your way back because you know what's happening on each week and you know what's going to have to slot in so you can get to that end point. When they were presented with the ridiculous concept of an All-Ireland final on the 24th of July, this is the manifestation of it. So you're going to be in the same position next year and the year after. You know, I think Eamon's point is well made. Maybe it's the first steps on those roads. I would probably have a fair degree of skepticism on that because I think the changes that they made just like in great in the great GA tradition once the change is made ah sure it's grand now we'll leave that and it'll be 20 years before another one Rory can I just throw in there that the, the rationale for the 20 what did you say the 25th of July or 24th whatever date you said there mm. the rationale for that 
was to get the clubs up and running. Yeah. I know in our county and in the in in the, in the counties that I know anything about here in the west and uh, etc. Their championships aren't starting until September. Kev, Kev, I got it. And Look, I think that's pretty common around the around the, I know, around, around the country. I, 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 also, Kev, like I look, I'm the chair of a club. I get communications from the Dublin County Board all of the time. We got an email to map out the season at the beginning of the year where they put in a lot of provisos about all the different changes and a big line, which is underlined. OK, we're doing X, Y and Z. And we also are factoring in a break in August. So we're all going on holidays. We're all going on holidays in August. You know, and I don't. Do we have a problem with that? I mean, like there was this notion put out there that this is in some way suiting RTE's agenda. I'm going on holidays with my family for the first time in 20 years in August. I don't care. Like RTE will still show the... If you put the All-Ireland final in the week of Christmas, which happened two years ago, we'll show it, no problem. This isn't an issue for us, like, you yeah. know? Um. Okay, we'll better get on to the games and I think we'll do them in chronological order in reverse. <laughs> so let's yeah. let's start above in Ulster, shall we? Yeah, in start, with the good, start with the really good one. Yeah, let, let's start with the game. I'd say everybody, even a Kerry man, even a former Ross Common manager might admit that, no, maybe not you, Kev. This is the game I think most people are looking forward to the most. Um, it's a fascinating one for, for many reasons. Eamon, um, obviously Roy Gallagher for the second time coming up against uh, the team he used to manage uh, in an Ulster final, having previously got there with Fermanagh. Um, I think this Derry team will put it up to Donegal. This Donegal team, more than that Fermanagh team, put it up to that Donegal team. <laughs> it would be a fair way of putting it, wouldn't it? Uh, absolutely, Mikey. I think, look, it, it is going to be a fantastic game. Um, I think we're going to really see where Derry are at this weekend and likewise Donegal. Um, I think, look... A lot of us have been fascinated with the development of Derry over the last couple of seasons and how close they were last season. You know, they were their development was maybe stunted a small bit last year because of the lack of qualifiers and losing so narrowly to Donegal. They didn't get a chance to go and maybe play at least another game or two um, to continue on the path that they're clearly on. Um, I think this weekend, though, it is, Donegal have seen them twice, they've shown their hand twice. Whether Rory Gallagher has held back one or two things, I don't know if he has. Um, maybe something around their own kick out he might have held back, but Donegal have see, can see them coming from a distance and I think they have the tools and the personnel to deal with what Derry are doing. So uh, if Derry managed to win this game, you know, obviously it's a massive achievement in its own right, winning an Ulster Championship, but they're serious live contenders for the All-Ireland if they manage to win it. But um, I have a feeling it might be a stretch for them this weekend. And still, they're going. if that's the case and it pans out that way, they're going to be seriously awkward opposition for any anyone else in, in the qualifier side of things then. And they might still have a big say this year, but I think Donegal are going to... Um, really test them on a lot of the things that they've been doing so far. I expected Manahan to do the same. Mm. I think Manahan were a small bit disappointing the last day, but um, I think Donegal have, the, like I said, the tools and the personnel to really test their game plan. Okay. Uh, hold, hold my hand on this one then, Eamon. What, what is it that Derry have done to beat Tyrone and to beat Manahan, and what will Donegal do to counteract it? Um, there's a lot of the, the, that's um, the, 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 the bullet points, shall we say? Yeah, <laughs> that's my piece for the examiner on Saturday. I'm on Saturday so I'll have to go off and write something else. So, um, look, I think there's a couple of key areas. I think, first of all, um, the the dairy, their own kick out, uh, both, both kick outs, their own kick out. First of all, they have the tendency to go along, it has worked for them so far. Um, you know, the obvious advantage of that is you're up the field quicker and you can get at teams quicker once you're winning it. Um, they've seemed so far to be quite happy to lose it, but Monaghan didn't punish them, as well, even though they had a huge amount of attacks, a huge amount of shots. They, they, you know, they just didn't make a count the last day. I think Donegal will make that count on Sunday if they're losing their own kick out. Um, I think that's something that's going to definitely put them under a bit of pressure. But I imagine Rory Geller has a plan B for, for that kind of a situation. Similarly, then with Sean Patton at the other side, um, 
his kick out there he have tended to press the kick out a lot of the time so far and then reset and get back mm-hmm. into defense quickly they do that against Patton they'll the find kick it 90 hard. yards yeah <laughs> and 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 the kick out targets that Donegal have as well make that a bit harder um I think the other thing as well is that I think that they've done very well is they've when they've counter-attacked they've managed to create a lot of space in the middle portion of the pitch while also having shape up front and that has allowed the likes of McKenless and players like that to sprint through that area of the pitch. I I imagine Donegal will have that um, well rumbled. They'll have the, the, the likes of maybe Hugh McFadden Park there to deal with oncoming runners and it'll slow down that counter-attack that has been so effective for them so far. So I, I they're just a couple of the snippets. I just think that Donegal will be more patient. They have the long-range shooters as well from outside that Monaghan you know, didn't have the last day. Um, they're more experienced than them. So I know you predicted Derry from the start, Mikey, for the Ulster Championship. So uh, they, they still may very well win it, but I just think that Donegal's experience and news could really come into this weekend. Never mind Rory Gallagher. I'll be unbearable if Derry win the Ulster football <laughs> title. Uh, Kevin, I want, I want to know how he chose Derry to win the Ulster Championship. <laughs> Like was it? Did he pull it out of a hat? Or no, I I like no. the I like the cut of their jib in in, in Division Two. I just I just like the way they were playing. Third. I think, uh huh. Third in Division Two. Yeah, yeah, but it's it, you can't just look at you can't just look at the league table and make your decision like that. Kev. You have to really analyze these games. You are right, going dig you. deep into them. Um, <laughs> don't the ask other, me to do that. That's what you're... <laughs> the other three experts that were on with you that day, including Rory and myself, Went for Arma. Picked Arma. Yeah. yeah, no, we did say we did say we did say, Eamon, we felt the winners would come from that side of the draw, and that's why we went for Arma. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, grasping at straws. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, 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 on the other team, then Kevin uh, Donegal, a- Eamon makes a very a very strong case there, um, which is built on the assumption that you can trust Donegal. Have we got back to the point where we trust this Donegal team, particularly in an Ulster final? Well, if you if you go back on it, you're on Derry. I I went for Donegal at the, at the beginning, and uh, I, I think one last time I went for Donegal. <laughs> I've been on them for the last three or four uh, seasons. Um, Fitzy's points are all all well made are all well made um, it, it is going to be tight I imagine uh, it's going to be a tight game but I think uh, well I put it this way Mikey this is a massive match for Donegal this is a bigger match for Donegal than it is for Derry you know Derry will have life after the Ulster final as in Rory Gallagher will will stay on and they'll they'll fight to get out of Division 2 next spring and they'll keep going and they're a, a, a project that's moving mm. at a night it's a slow burner but it is moving at a nice pace, if that's not a contradiction. But um, the for Donegal, I should think this is this is the the line in the sand for for Declan Bonner and and um, for Rachi uh, and, uh, and 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 the management team and for quite a few of their older players. I mean, this is time now produce uh, produce or leave the table. I should think because they will find it very difficult to continue in, into the qualifiers if they don't have the confidence of an Ulster final behind them. I think Derry absolutely can move on into the into, into the last 12 and still be still be in, in good fettle. So it's it's a massive match for them. Um, I, I just think overall, Donegal are the better team. They're the better footballers. Um, they're, they're hugely experienced. Like this, this Ulster final, they've been in, what, 10 and 12, is there something like that? Mm something a, a big number and yeah 10 and so, ten the last 10 12. so this is and it's brand new for it's brand new for the Derry boys uh now it's a it, it's sold out complete uh, complete sellout you know it's going to be an, an incredible atmosphere um i've done a good few of the ulster finals over the last 10 10 10 12 years and they're they're brilliant they they have seen they are you you said maybe maybe i'd, I'd have my eye on connacht of course i would but uh, but connacht won't won't produce what the Ulster final is likely to produce, I would suggest. It's a different type of um, championship, if you like. Um, I'm back on Donegal because I think Donegal, like, I know it's very simplistic for me to say that. I just think they have the better players. They're they're physically more intimidating. You you mentioned there, Eamon, on, on the long kick out. Donegal can infest that middle third with big, big boys. Uh, um, the McFadden role that you correctly outlined 
he's there all the time. I can picture him in every match I've ever done from Donegal, and he's playing. And the minute I show, he's dropped to the top of the D, and he's the first contact. Anybody coming in, he's he, he's not one of these sweepers waving at you. He's out there <laughs> looking for he's out there looking for contact. So they're very well set up that way. Uh, I think what what we missed in the semi final that gave Derry the oxygen to go on and win it. Obviously the goals. Derry don't score goals. Derry will struggle. They don't get the points as easy as other teams. Um, and you saw that against Galway in the league. That's what probably scuppered them. Um, Monin could have put uh, could have put Derry under severe pressure, lads, if their accuracy. I I I got it up to I think eleven wides or maybe thirteen. I'm not sure, but it's of, it's of that number anyway. Um, and those those crucial moments when you're you're you know you're trying to pad out a bit of a lead or cut back into a lead, and you're putting wides that should really be scores. They're drainers. So Monning could never get up ahead of steam to really ask a question of Derry. So they were able to keep them at hand's length, uh, if you like. Uh, I don't see that happening with Donegal. Donegal are a much more patient team. Um, the more accuracy in front of the goal, more natural accuracy. Like there's McManus and there's McCarran for Monning. Donegal will have a lot more uh, uh, clever shooters than that. And, and, and they'll be a lot more patient. They won't snatch at it. You won't, you, you know, the Hughes and these guys tend to come up from on and they'll snatch a bit at a shot and it won't be fully, you won't see that from Donegal. They're much more patient outfit. But it's, but, but it's a massive match. The pressure of this match will be, will be, will be a big one. They, like, you know, they blew up against Cavan in, in, in the final, uh, in the final, is it two years ago now? Two years now? ago, yeah. Two years ago now. So that has to be in the back of their mind a, a little bit. So on all known evidence, I have a pundit that goes on evidence, uh, Mikey, rather than picking it out of a hat. Um, oh, the, no, that's low. <laughs> on all known evidence, on all known evidence, Mikey, I think it, ha- it has to be, it has to be um, Donegal. Uh, but there will be a mighty, there will be a mighty challenge. Like, Derry are the story of the champions, no question about that. Um, and and the fair play to them. But I can't, I can't, um, I can't see them beating Donegal. Okay. Rory, are you going to stand up for me and my, uh, and my lads here? No, I'm not. I'm not. I watched. Uh, I'm not. I watched. I watched. I, You've been abandoned, Mikey. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I watched la- last year's game. Kev was actually co calm on it, um, but I watched the hype. I watched the, the match from the hide behind angle last night. Just kind of get a sense of it um, and there was a few things that stood out the first thing was Michael Murphy didn't come on until 10 minutes into the second half he'll be playing for the full game this time and there was a noticeable difference when he did come on not necessarily in terms of his contribution but he just brings he brings a presence I think on the field when he's there um, Rogers went on to him straight away you'd imagine Chrissy McCaig will be like a wetsuit on um uh, again on Paddy McBrearty and snuffed him out by and large for most of the game yeah. but McBrearty still popped up with the key moment at the yeah, key that's time the and that's what he's capable of I think Eamon's point which became, was very obvious when you watch it particularly from the high behind is and La- Michael Langan was outstanding last year yeah. they, can, they can shoot from range they can kick the ball over from 35-40 metres like uh, inside of the boot outside of the boot Langan, Niall O'Donnell, Murphy himself, McBrearty, they have the distance. So if you set up that screen, now they're going to play a double sweeper type scenario, Derry. If you set up that screen, they'll, they'll, they have the, the, the armory to kick the ball over your head anyway. So I just think, and then to go back again, and I do think Patton is the better of the two goalkeepers. So I think there's more, uh, Kevin, his point is well made in that there's probably more pressure on Donegal. They really do need to... Um, Use the potty this time, or else pass it on. But uh, I do, and, and it's going to be a fantastic occasion. Derry are in the minor final as well. It'll be superb. It'll be a great day. But I, I just think the experience and the physical presence, they just won't be as profligate at the back two in terms of cough, coughing up goal chances in the way that Monaghan did. And I fancy Donegal to win. Okay, right. So that's that's three, three to one. Um, I just, I'm just curious quickly then, Eamon, sorry, if, if Donegal win this match kind of relatively convincingly, would you put them up there with, with, with Kerry and with with Dublin and perhaps with, let's throw in Galway for the crack because they're another one of my tips as teams that could actually win in All-Ireland? I would, Mikey, but the one thing, as Kevin mentioned it already, it's, it's hard to trust Donegal just from the point of view that when they've got to this stage over the last couple of years, they, they've flattered to deceive so um, 
but look again i think they have they, they 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 have the personnel to do damage absolutely deep into the championship but look similar to Kerry until they actually do that you know it, it's 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 hard to questions. Say. yeah yeah there's mm-hmm. questions and it's hard to say it with any degree of certainty but um uh, if if they're to win on sunday yeah absolutely they're in the conversation for sure you were nodding, Kev. You agree, do you? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I, exactly. I, I won't add to it. I agree. Don't <laughs> yeah. what even says until oh. un, until until they, until they do it, they haven't done it. Yeah, I I I I just couldn't. I couldn't put any faith in them at this stage, personally. I'm I'm all in on Derry. Um. Okay, we'll move. Uh, we'll move on to Connacht and um. We'll start with yourself, Kevin. Um. People like me get excited about Galway. I don't know what it is. It's tradition. It's maybe grown up on that team of the late 90s, early noughties and just like wanting Galway to be better, um, which probably suits Roscommon quite well because Roscommon tipping along, obviously, you know, got, got out of Division 2 along with Galway and have, and I think we've made this point several times here, have as good a sextet of forwards as probably there are in the country at the moment. Well, I mightn't go as, as good a sextet as in the country, but certainly as good as you know, the rest of the bunch. Um, you know, I, I'd probably put Dublin stroke Kerry as the top offensive teams in the country. Uh, um, but Roscommon can certainly hold their own with the rest. Um, it's gas, and, and I, I'm laughing to myself here about how you said, you know, it's I fancy Galway. It's probably tradition when they come with a good team. And I was explaining to um, a Galway man, maybe the day before yesterday, Ali Turner, he was doing a bit for Galway Bay FM, nice lad. I was doing a, a piece with him. And I was trying to explain to him the huge danger for Galway with this fixture. Because despite the evidence in front of you and the evidence of your own eyes, the Galway public do not see Roscommon ever, despite results as a threat. And I think that's probably a national... Uh, perception as well uh, because of the tradition of Galway again Galway seven or eight all Ireland's that type of thing and have dominated Connacht along with Mayo but uh, it might surprise you to know that Roscommon on average beat them one in every three you know that's they're the numbers on it I, they're the 17 champions the 19 champions uh, I think they've played them in five finals two two wins a piece and a draw and despite that and we're all done up in Pierce Stadium as well, I might add. Despite all that evidence, the around the, the, the breakfast tables and dinner tables in Galway, it's it. Al Churches, if we play, there's no chance. Like, <laughs> if our three best lads play, we have a one. Isn't that right, lads? And that plays perfectly into Roscommon because Roscommon will be just busying themselves, getting ready to uh, see what can they do on Damien Comer, Paul Conroy and Shane Walsh. Full in the knowledge that if they, if they were to tie those three up, and that is what you have to do uh, for the likes of a, of a Roscommon. If you can tie those three up, you're, you're probably gone seven-tenths of the way to winning the final, I should think. Um, but there's a big but there is, at the moment, those those three, they're Galway's three best players. And at the moment, they're playing like Galway's three best players. You, you reference Paul winning the, the player of the month, and deservedly so. And fair play, he's a, he's a, he's a great lad. Um so those three are playing, you know, I won't say at the absolute top of their form, but their, their form is going in definitely the, the right direction. Conroy is as good as, as he's ever played for Galway. Uh, Comer's injury-free and coming well. And Shane Walsh, you know, Shane Walsh is just one of those groove players. If he hits it, you're in trouble. I, I, I was managing the 2018 final. And, you know, we must have spent three weeks trying to figure out how to get after him. And then he just got into the groove and we could not stop him. And he, he you know, he, he won that final on his own for, for Galway. Um, so that's the danger for us common. But I can tell you locally, um, there's a quiet confidence um, that Russ Common are going to go up there and, and give a huge account of themselves. The players themselves would have no fear of this Galway team because they've seen with their own eyes that they can go up there, they can defend against them. Uh, and they can attack against them. And one little one little adjustment I'll just point out to you. When you think of Roscommon, you probably think of Enda Smith, be the first guy that comes into your head. And in my time, you know, I had to play him at midfield. I didn't have I didn't have the luxury, I just didn't have the 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 the, the partnership that would work. Um, but Anthony has been able to put together a very, very workmanlike midfield in Alton Harney and uh, young Nolan from, Eddie from Nolan, uh, Bridget's yeah. Eddie Nolan. 
uh, and that has freed up Ender to go to 11. And he is, lads, he's a smashing player. He's a very, very dangerous player who scores goals from deep. He's a, like, he, he must have the record for goals from midfield in Ireland. He just, but he, he can score both feet, really a talented player. So that's going to, Galway will have a fair job done when they've tied down the, the Roscommon sextet. So it's all bubbling up nicely. I suppose if I was pushed to a gun to my head, I'd say, yeah, right now, today, Thursday, Galway maybe by a point or two because their three lads are flying. But I have no sense that Roscommon will do anything else than push them to the end. Uh, and every possibility of winning it themselves by a point or two. Okay. Eamon, um, how do you see it going? Um, yeah, I find it very hard to call us, to be honest, Mikey. I think it's I think something that might be coming against Roscommon is it's very hard to beat a team for the third time when you're kind of closely matched in the in the same season. Um a thing that I'm going to be interested in, I suppose, first of all, to back up what Kevin is saying, I think the three big boys for Galway are all playing well and they've all stayed injury free this year or certainly for the last couple of months, which means that they're training night in, night out because basically if they're able, they have to play, but at the same time to play at the top of their game, they have to be training consistently, which they are, which is clear in their performances. So that is a danger sign for Roscommon, but... The one thing about Roscommon that I'll be watching out for this weekend is Galway to great effect against uh, Mayo. They played with Dylan McHugh and Kieran Malai playing as those kind of double sweepers cheating in. And they were able to because of the players they were marking from, from Mayo. Whereas it's a different um, scenario now against Roscommon because Roscommon have six scoring forwards that will threaten you and will cause damage so if you're talking about cheating off Kieran Morta and Cahill Hennigan you can't so are they going to drop wing forwards to pick them up to allow the lads to, 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 to cheat back are they going to be too defensive then if that happens are they going to cheat off them and see what happens so I think the Galway defensive system uh, in terms of Padraig Joyce is in its early um, stages of its development and I'll be interested to see how that works out that's fine that works very well when you have players playing deep and dropping off you but when you have six forwards up going going at it it'll ask a lot of different questions so I think that 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 will certainly for me anyway that will be interesting on Sunday um, in terms of college, I'm not one. sure here's a funny one uh, Eamon um, I'm, I'm hearing locally that um uh, Jeremy Murta won't make the starting 15. Yeah. Now, when I in my time, he was the best forward we had, but you know, he just was a marvelous, marvelous footballer. Now, I, you know, I don't know form and everything, I don't know what's going on in the training, but I put it this way if he cannot make the starting six for us common, and I think he all you'd all be able to picture Jeremy Murta mm. kicking points from sideline and distance, and and you saw the goal he got in. You, you might call that poor defending, but I tell you, lads, he was able to weave in around two or three players and rocket it to the side of there. That was a smash. The, the smashing side of the goal bit seemed to be lost in the narrative, which again makes the point I'm making about Galway. Yeah. The Galway public would see that as poor defending, not a brilliant goal. But um, Jeremy uh, is unlikely to start, so you know that would uh, that would be saying to me, well, he's going to come on, and when he comes on, exactly what Eamon is saying, he's going to be another threat. Because you can't leave him, you can't sag off him and give him ten yards. I can assure you, he'll curl it over with his left all day. Yeah, Rory, have you been have you been dining at a breakfast table in Galway this week, or do you think Ross Common have a shot here? No, and to go back to our early predictions, I'm going to stick with Ross Common because I did feel they'd have a nice warm up game, which they won comfortably enough against Sligo. So they're heading into this final again, as Kevin said, like unheralded unheralded it they're not they're not getting a huge amount of um publicity they're... or would you say untested because Galway did have the Mayo game yeah, before Leach yeah, yeah but I like I think I think they got as much of a test they got as much out of the league final as they probably would have wanted anyway you know they were once that was over I'd say they were probably all systems goal everybody is fit from what I hear uh, yeah. from a Roscommon perspective which is great news I think they match very well too with Galway's key players somebody who doesn't get a lot of credit and again I watched the uh, that league final back uh, on Monday and um, this guy Brian Stack full back lads what a player he is like I mean a lot of counties Curry roots. Uh, what's, sorry Kev from parents from Kerry you see 
We import, we import them as many as we can. <laughs> but, like, I mean, you know, I think his matchup with Comer alone is going to be quite interesting. And that's something to really savor and look forward to. Like, he's a fabulous player. You know, loads of counties would love to have him. So I think they match that might well. That be the matchup, though, Rory. They, well, might, you they, they might put him out. They might put him out in Walsh. Yeah. But, but would it? Yeah, would they not like because obviously Walsh wasn't fit for the league finals, so they, you know, now I don't know, would Walsh maybe have that little bit too much mobility for him? But you know, I think they do, they do have the right matchups at the back, they've got a scoring threat up front, they're going to be going into it as usual, where people are just going to be focusing on Galway. I think it's perfect. I think as somebody like Anthony Cunningham will relish going into Salt Hill, yeah, I'm going to stick with Ross Common on this one. I think they, um. Yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, I think the, the big thing for Ross Common for me, if they were to win on Sunday, they need to really progress now. I'd love to see Ross Common make an All Ireland semi final, for instance. When's the last time that happened, Kevin? You're going back to uh, yeah, about, uh, yeah? 19, 1991, 92, around that period. Yeah, lost so to me than a semi final. Yeah, so you're going back a long time, okay? So you're going back to the to, to the years. old knockout days. Yeah. So like that's that will be the key thing. But look, they have to get over Sunday first, and yeah, I'm going to stick with them. I think the Anthony Stack, Cunningham. By the way, um, get the job Stack done. is the lad. Um, in, in the 2017 final that I was involved in, um, he's the lad that got the decisive goal from wing forward. So what, what am I saying? It gives you a sense of the footballer he is. Like yeah. He can play anywhere. He plays midfield for club, he's fullback, centre-back. He's a smashing player. Can't get a smashing. game in the forwards to put him fullback. <laughs> Can't get a game in the forwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that's that, that's 2-1 to go and a non, and, 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 and a lack of a declaration from Heyman, which is fair enough. We'll, we'll allow him that one. I just said, could Ross come in, Mikey? I went for them at the start as well. Oh, did you? Oh, all right. Okay, right. So that's that's 3-1. Jeez, I'm outnumbered today, lads. I'm outnumbered. I will be unbearable on Monday if these two come in. Um, one word actually Kev just on the, the Pierce Stadium thing because obviously the hoary subject of Crow Park comes up around the Leinster Football Championship um, Killarney versus Barky Cueve obviously I, I, I think there's a there's a treaty uh, there's a treaty there that was drawn up in Zurich to, to arrange that one um, it's obviously a little bit more casual in Connacht or at least it seems to be you know it seems to end up in Pierce Stadium a lot and you're saying Roscommon that doesn't bother them? No, no, the, the arrangements we have in, 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 in Connacht were a very simple race of people, Mikey. Uh, it's home, away, home, away, while they're in the championship. And if that's a final, it's your luck. And if it's not a final, so be it. You know, that's just the way that's the way it flows. But absolutely not. Roscommon have, uh, uh, have a very good modern record there. Last three finals, they played in there, two wins and a draw. Uh, the defeat was down in Castle Bar, if you remember, we had, mm. no, pitch at, we had no pitch at the time. And um, the, yeah, so no fear whatsoever. Um, big crowd as well. I was talking to a, a county board officer yesterday, met, met, met her up, up the town, and she was saying ticket sales are going very decent. So, yeah, and, and it's good weather, I believe, Killarney and Pierce Stadium for the weekend. So um, that's always good. Because the last few finals in, in Pierce Stadium have been bloody wet finals. Yeah. And uh, so we Shocking could do weather. We could do with a nice summer's day, yeah. There you go. So you're moving the championship to early summer, you know, and it's, it's working out already. Um, okay, I, I, we're, we're working backwards in time as we get to the finish line. So five o'clock, um, how do you see the Champions Cup final going? Sorry, Eamon, no, um, <laughs> uh, the Leinster the football final between Dublin and Kildare. Kildare probably, like, Meath travelled with optimism last year and they got something and probably their optimism had dissipated before this year when they and rightly got hosed. Kildare's optimism for this year doesn't seem to have dissipated. They they do seem to think on the evidence of their league campaign where they both got relegated to leave no Leinster team in the top flight, um, that they have a shot here and that maybe is there a suggestion that for Kildare between the years is the most important part here. And if they actually believe that they can give Dublin the game, well, then they actually might give Dublin the game. Yeah, I, I think they, they, they'll they firmly believe, and I don't think Glenn Ryan is the type of personality that he's going to be thinking about anything other than a win on Saturday evening. And, um, you know, bearing in mind, I suppose, when you look back 12 months and they went into the Leinster final last year, and it was a kind of a containment policy. Maybe the appreciation wasn't still clear that Dublin really were, you know, on the way in at that stage. We'd been talking about it, but the evidence was presenting itself bit by bit until Mayo finished the job last year. And, you know, there's a freedom for the players in 
League going at the Dubs on Saturday evening and they have they have the players to, to cause Dublin problems. I think with Kildare, it'll have to be the Kildare that played against Louth um, rather than the Kildare that played against Westmead because if they're as lax as they were defensively in particular against Westmead, then they'll go to town in them. But I don't expect them to be like that. I expect them to really perform at the weekend. Um, I think their, their full forward line is it's 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 a pretty obvious statement to say that if their full forward line gets a decent supply of possession, they'll 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 do damage. Um, and Daniel Flynn this year, he's been playing much more of a team game, and he's been very effective in there. But I'm waiting for him to explode in one of the big days, and this is an opportunity for them to, for, for him to explode. And in fairness to Jimmy Highland and Derek Irwin, both of them have been playing very well. Um, both of them played well the last day. So I think, yeah, I think Kildare are going to have a real go at it, Mikey. I don't think it's going to be like the meat game or the meat game last year. Um, Dublin, by all accounts, are a bit uh, irked as the way that they're being written off and so on. And I expect a bit of a response from them. But the question I'd have over the dubs is, can they still do it at the level that they did it? I know they want to. I know they want to answer everyone that's given out about them or questioning them or whatever. But... Have they still got the ability, number one, and that ferocious appetite, number two? I think they did very well against Meade, but there were still signs of slappiness there at times during the game and from some of their biggest players. Uh, but again, the couple of weeks they've had, I expect that to be eradicated by the weekend. But expect it to be a very close game, to be honest about it. Yeah. Um, Kev, you, you've seen Dublin up close now a couple of times where you, you, you were down at the uh, the massacre of Clannard anyway. We know that much. And I, I don't know how much you could <laughs> read into that one. But they, they seem to have got their groove back. Um, but unfortunately for them, thus far, since relegation, I suppose they're getting their confidence back against beating a Division 4 team and beating a Mead team who were beaten before the match started, which seems to be the general consensus. So they want to test... But at the same time, they got tests in Division One, and it didn't go so well for them. So, so are we are we being a little hasty in saying the Dubs are back? The twenty the twenty twenty uh, edition of the Dubs are back. Oh, we'll we'll know um, we'll know we'll know Saturday evening. Um, uh, I I I made the point to you previously that you know that Wexford match and to uh, to a certain degree also the Mead match. Although I thought there was a little bit more sloppiness in the Mead match than there needed to be. I would, I would agree with Eamon on that. But in general, um, Dublin are doing everything that they have to do so far. You know, whatever's put in front of them, they're 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 milling it. There, there's no no question about that. This is this is a challenge now coming. I think the coming at the weekend. I think the Kildare effort will be uh, predicated on their offense on on their their attack. One fellow we didn't mention there, Eamon, is is. Um, the eleven guy, the McCormick, Ben McCormick. McCormick yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. scored. He scored five points from play. Yeah. Um, I was doing that match. Yeah, I was doing that match in the afternoon, and uh, he was very impressive. So I don't know much about Alex Byrne, the, the Nates lad at, at ten, um, but the other five, Paul Cribbin, Ben McCormick, Paul and the Cribben, ones you yeah. were talking about, Eamon, like they're formidable now. They again, I go back to the Roscommon um, comparison. They score in front of the goals. Unlike a lot of Kildare forwards over the years, they're, they are accurate uh, and they're they're quite direct. So they're definitely going to they're going to um, pose a problem. And the, the Kildare midfield, Feely and what's his partner, um, Callahan. Yeah, they're going to they're 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 going to have a say in matters as well because they're big big men. Yeah, and Feely has Feely has huge potential. He, They're he the household names, aren't they, Kev? The problem is from two to seven, a lot of people, casual fans, might struggle to name any Kildare defenders. Yeah. Well, Mick O'Grady, we'd, we'd all mention him, definitely, yeah. but he, he'd be tied up in the man-marking job on somebody or other, you'd, you'd, you'd have thought. Um, I, I think it's like it's it's like we're back to Donegal now. You know, on, on, until, until Kildare do something big, uh, you know, a, a, a major scalp, they haven't done it until they do it. I know that's very unfair and it's a bit kind of a blase line, but it, it's, you know, the, at some stage, you have to make the breakthrough. You have to, there's a, always a team in front of you. At some stage, you say, they have to be bet lads. Or we're never going to arrive as a serious force in this. And this is, this is, this is their game. Uh, the, the misfortune for them is that I think Dublin are getting their stuff together. 
Mm. And I think a lot of it, Eamon has put his finger on it, I think a, a lot psychology-wise is that they're really peed over the perception that uh, they've washed the shovels and gone home early and they're not interested in winning championships and, you know, this team that they had has, has, has is no more. Well, well, that is true. The great team is not there anymore, but they have a, sm they have a smashing team. I, I put them I, number one and two, Kerry, Kerry Dublin. That's, that's mm. my pecking order for the All-Ireland right now. Um, uh, so until Kildare beat them, you know, all, all we're doing is, is, is surmising, really. But, yeah. you know, I, I think they have a huge challenge. There, there's a, there's going to take a lot. It'll, it'll take an awful lot to beat this Dublin team in Leinster. Yeah. Because, you know, they're, this is what they've dominated. This is their bedrock. Nobody gets a look in in this championship. So for Kildare to take them down will be a massive achievement by them. And one that would certainly launch their era, the 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 uh, Glen Ryan era. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I give them a great chance, but I don't think they have enough to do it. Yeah, Rory, it's a good argument for. Uh, we started off here discussing the you know the downgrading of the provincial championships. So you could look at this game as a precursor to next year's Division Two final if you're an optimistic yeah. Kildare fan, or you could look at it as actually this is a huge game for Kildare because if they win this, if they actually manage to win an Leinster title. That's huge. That's that you could argue that it would be bigger for them than it would be for Derry to win the Ulster title. You could throw the argument out there that it it, it would be huge. It it actually it would lift the Leinster Championship to something more than it has been for the last seventeen years. Really big for Gaelic football as well in a province that you know has been in a, a blue prison really for the best part of two decades. I mean, you're going back to two thousand. I think the last time Kildare actually won it and I think it was it um was it uh, that's the last time they've beaten Dublin in the championship as well if I'm not mistaken and funnily enough the two captains on that day were Glenn Ryan and Desi Farrell which is quite mm -hmm. interesting um so look I think it would be a huge thing for them but uh, I'm just not I'm just like it, it, an awful lot if Dublin come out of the traps early and go after goals and they might, because they might look at that Kildare full back line and that Kildare defence and say, look, lads, there's hay there. If they go out and they, you know, bang in a goal early or a second goal early, you know, heads drop. That would be the big fear for me. I think key thing for them is just to make sure, I, like even if it meant just sitting back for the first 20 minutes, you know, don't let the game get away from you in that early period. So some seeds of doubt. And then trust the fact that you do have the firepower up front once you gain a foothold in the game. And I think that might mean playing slightly defensive, certainly from the start. If they go out and try and play man-to-man -man against that Dublin forward line with that defence, I think it could be a bit of Groundhog Day once again in Leinster and Dublin to win comfortably. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we're all going for Dublin here. I'm. I, I'm not. I'm not going against you this time, lads. I know we're running out of time, and I, I. I'm not trying to be cruel here, but there's a reason we left the monster, the monster final to last. Uh, and Eamon, what, I'm not going to. Mikey, one thing yeah. I'll say about Munster, right? For all, I mean, look, I know most of the teams in it are at a really low quality, at a really low level, and I include Cork, obviously, in that. that that's has, not true. It's not as low. Like yeah, in, yeah, in terms yeah. of divisions, it's not as low as Leinster for us. But it's, pro it's pro like in terms of stories, it's nearly been the most interesting because we had the Parky Ring thing to kick <laughs> things off, where 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 they were actually going to play the game. We had a penalty shootout between Clare and Limerick. We have the emergence of Limerick or the re-emergence of Limerick as a, as a footballing entity. And it also contains the hottest of all Ireland favourites. So no pressure there, Eamon. <laughs> <laughs> they never give up, these card fillers, do they? They've, never... yeah, they've, they've no skin in the game, but yet they've always got skin in the game. Eamon, I, look, I'm not going to ask you to, to yarry your way to safety here or anything like that, but what would you be looking to see from Kerry this weekend? Look, I think from from Kerry's point of view, anything other than uh, a good performance and a good win will be will be a shock, Mikey. To be honest, I think uh, you know they're going to be prepared well for the game. They're going to be really looking forward to it. They haven't played in three weeks again. Um, fellas that are getting the starting jersey are going to be anxious to make sure they're holding on to their starting jersey. And look, they're men in a mission this year. And I certainly don't expect them to get unstuck this weekend. Um, I'll, I'll be shocked if it isn't a, a, a very, you know, 
significant Kerry win after a good Kerry performance. I'll be I'll be surprised if it doesn't pan out that way. Um, I think Limerick will absolutely tear into Kerry, and they're coming from a point of view of having nothing to lose. But I think the difference in quality as the game goes on will probably make make a difference in the end. If it goes to penalties, you'd have to fancy Limerick. They have the background. <laughs> they have the experience. But it won't go to penalties because it'll, be it yeah. um, it'll be a replay. It'll be a replay. That's why it won't go to penalties. Uh, yeah, Eamon, no, just, will, uh, just to get a round off our, our, our chat, um, like we were started talking about provincial championships. We're talking about this Kerry team as being like, you know, the number one contenders for the All-Ireland. Some of the most exciting players in the country. Given the current structure, and I know it's on the way out, isn't it a real shame how infrequently we're seeing them during the summer? Like the, the, the gaps between Kerry games are pronounced. It's a handicap for Kerry. I would also suggest Mikey. Sorry, yeah. man. Sorry. Yeah, no, it is. It is absolutely. And look, I think in, in many ways, it actually lo- it suits the qualifiers, the way the games are laid out for the rest of the thing that you you have two weeks between your games if you lose the provincial final, you have two weeks to the to, to get yourself right and get try and get into a quarter final. Whereas for the four provincial champions, they have four weeks off at the height of the championship, which is far from ideal. So uh it is, it's unusual, but um I hope by the end of the summer you'll you'll be sick of looking at Kerry Mikey. <laughs> uh, and their internal and their internal competition is pretty intense now as well at this stage, Mikey. Like they've they've they've, they've actually built a really yeah. really good. Oh no, I, I'm thinking more from so, the, the fr- yeah, from the yeah, yeah. From, from the from side the, of the regular punter who'd yeah, like to see you want Kerry to see play. Them, you want to watch him? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Kevin for for opposition managers, the more you get to see him, the more you get to try and unpick them. Whereas Cork was whatever it was a month ago. Now they'll play Limerick and presumably win without having to show their full hand. No offense to the Limerick team and Billy Lee. Like if if you look at it from Jack Jack O'Connor's perspective, <clears throat> he's going to emerge out of Munster essentially untested. So how does he how does he control that within the group by performing well? by doing all the stuff they're supposed to be doing at championship level with a big win. So the confidence is only going in one direction. So that's what you, the, the, like one of the great uh, things, one of the things you have to admire always about Harry and Eamon's teams and that he played and managed is they have been brilliant at preparing to play underdogs. I, every year I'm always astounded by, you know, Jesus, does it ever get tight? No, they're always beaten by 12, 13, 14 points because they respect the opposition. They know there's a process they have to go through. Uh, because, it's called the Monster uh, Championship. <laughs> but yes, I, yeah, I know, but uh, the, the process is get out of here for Dublin in good shape. You know, that we're, we're not struggling for form as we, as we push towards Dublin. And by and large, they have been outstanding at doing that. I don't see, I don't see any, any, any d- difference this weekend, this Saturday. It's going to be a long day for Limerick, I do believe. And a bit like the Dublin game, Rory, if Kerry go after goals and oh, they yeah. will not, they will not pass them up if there's two and ones and three and ones, because that's the thing that Jack will be killing them for at half time. You know, if mm-hmm. they get sloppy, in other words, that's the, that's the point I'm making. Whatever's out there to be got, if Ganey has to get, if he's presented with 1-7 in opportunities, he, he better be getting 1-5. That's the mm-hmm. point I'm making, that it's going to be a rootless situation because there's people breathing to get on the team, etc., etc. You know, so, and they have goal doors everywhere, the Cliffords, Ganey, etc. Et They're all lethal. So, they, you know, if, if they went after them early, it'd be a long day, be a long day, a long day for Limerick as well. Uh, Rory, have you anything to add here briefly? No, look, I mean, I just do to very well because I know the lads are rushing off there. Just one really quick story Tomas tell, told us there once upon a time. It was just after Potty had like, um, is this a true been, story now? Maybe not. No, it is a true story. Tomas said he's it was don't let that get in the way, Kev. It was, it was, it was just after Potty had been, um, extricated from the Kerry job back in 2003, wasn't it? In the winter of 03. And uh, they had beaten Tipperary in the first round of the Munster Championship and they were back in Dingle afterwards and the lads were kind of chuffed with themselves and Paddy was working away and they went in to meet him and, you know, like he was a bit thick as usual or, you know, because he was no longer involved and he said, oh, did you get on? And they said, oh, yeah, we won well. And he goes, oh, for God's sake, back in my day, we used to beat that crowd over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very good. Oh, very good. Um, so, listen, 
that that's it. That's the four provincial finals previewed. Uh, we do. We are aware there are seven Talton Cup games this weekend. We will review to go back them to all this, on Monday. To go st- back to the start, it's not our job to promote it. <laughs> it's um, it's our job to preview the biggest games of the weekend, and we did well to fit in four provincial finals. So um, we'll give a nod to those Chelsea games on Monday. Um, the four provincial finals are on RTE. Rory O'Neill will be RT2. here. RTE RTE two. RTE two. He'll be here grey haired on Monday to tell us how it all went. Uh, you can listen to him on Radio One uh, Saturday and Sunday Sport as well. And of course, we'll have live blogs, reports, reaction on the RT website and the RT News app. So we'll see you on Monday. And just to say thank you to Eamon and to Kevin and to Rory. And we'll chat to you then. Good luck. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar! Oh! Holy Moses!